Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. The royal court announced that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will depart tomorrow for Saudi Arabia to lead the kingdom's delegation to the 32nd Arab Summit in Jeddah. His Majesty the King is participating in the Arab Summit at the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed bin Salman Al Musallam opened the, open, the meeting of the Standing Committee on Economic and Sustainable Development of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly in the presence of Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh. Al Musallam affirmed that cooperation with Asia is a priority for Bahrain in line with the directives of His Majesty the King on strengthening sustainable partnerships to address mutual challenges and issues in the region. He said that legislative branch in Bahrain gives importance to parliamentary diplomacy as a tool to boost bilateral and multilateral Asian cooperation. He added that it can optimize the role of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly and enable it to achieve its objectives. The Speaker stressed the importance of directing parliamentary efforts towards the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals as part of Parliament's role in addressing global issues like climate change. He stressed the importance of Asian Parliamentary Dialogue to drive cooperation and forging joint strategies that would reflect in national legislation. Under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, the SCA, Chairman of Bahrain Diabetes Society, the BDS, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa inaugurated the hypertension detection campaign. The SCA chairman affirmed that 10 million deaths yearly are caused by high blood pressure and that may detect the illness earlier the death percentage will decrease. He noted that the BDS, through its community programs, is keen on looking after the health of people in general and diabetics in particular, as studies have shown that high blood pressure is associated with diabetes which contributes to increasing the risk to their health and exposing them to complications such as weak heart muscle strokes and cardiovascular and uh, neuropathy. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalil Hassan, stressed that high blood pressure is a serious pathological condition that greatly increases the risk of heart, brain and kidney diseases and is one of the main causes of premature death in the world. She noted that according to the World Health Organization, it is estimated globally that about 1.25 billion adults in the age group of 30 to 79 years suffer from high blood pressure and about 46 percent of adults with high blood pressure are unaware that they have it and less than half of adults with high blood pressure have been diagnosed with it and treated. And to speak more about this, we have with us on the phone consultant endocrinologist at Awali Hospital and chair of the scientific committee at Bahrain Diabetes Society, Professor Dalal Armehi. Hello, Professor Dalal. Can you please tell us more about the campaign and what it includes? Hello. So this campaign is called May Measurement Month, and it's a global campaign that has been ongoing around the world since 2017 with over 100 countries that has participated over the years, and over 5 million subjects have been enrolled. And in that sample, around 900,000 or say a million people found out that they had high blood pressure and they were unaware about it in the previous years. And this is the first year that Bahrain uh, joined that, national camp that global campaign, I should say. And we are very proud of the collaborative efforts because this is not an effort only from Bahrain Diabetes Society, but we are joined by the Ministry of Health and Primary Health Care, along with Bahrain Red Crescent. Great. Can you also elaborate on Bahrain's efforts to further develop its health services, especially in this field? Bahrain does so many efforts to improve the quality of health provided <coughs> to everybody in, in the country. So one of the efforts is a national uh, um, there's a national committee for combating non-communicable diseases or chronic diseases. And it is uh, chaired by Her Excellency, the Minister of Health, with representatives from not only health sector, but all relative, related societies, related ministries, like the Ministry of Information, Commerce, Education, etc. And we put programs together to improve screening and to improve therapy so that we can improve the quality of health in people and reduce chronic conditions. Additionally, now physicians are being evaluated in their performance on how well their patients are. So physicians who are checking their patient's blood pressure and maintaining it on target, for example, are better evaluated than physicians who don't achieve such uh, um, targets. Additionally, there's a lot of collaboration between NGOs, Bahrain Diabetes Society included, to raise awareness so that people adapt healthy lifestyle in terms of eating healthy, uh, engaging in regular physical activity, reducing salt, etc., to have a better quality of life. 
And that was consultant endocrinologist Professor Dada Romehi. Thank you very much for joining us. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif Ben Rashid Zayani, participated in the meeting of the Arab League Council at the level of foreign ministers ahead of the 32nd Arab Summit, which will be held in Saudi Arabia under the chairmanship of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdelaziz Al Saud, on Friday. The ministerial meeting was shared by Saudi Foreign Affairs Minister, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah, in the presence of Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abu Ghait. The Arab Foreign Affairs Minister discussed the reports of the presidency of the 31st session of the Arab Summit on the activities of the Commission to follow up on the implementation of resolutions and commitments of the Arab Summit. They discussed the Secretary General's report on the Joint Arab Action March and the Joint Arab Economic and Social Action, in addition to the topics on the agenda on the 32nd Arab Summit. The ministers also discussed the latest regional, political and security developments in the region and their repercussions on Arab national security as well as issues related to combating terrorism and regional interference in the country's internal affairs, in addition to topics related to ways to strengthen cooperation on addressing climate change and cybersecurity. They also reviewed the draft resolutions to be submitted to Arab leaders during the 32nd Arab Summit. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, met with his Kuwaiti counterpart, Sheikh Salim Abdullah Al Jabr Al Sabah, on the sidelines of the Arab Foreign Ministers meeting ahead of the 32nd Arab Summit to be hosted by Saudi Arabia. The two ministers discussed the distinguished, long standing fraternal relations between the two countries. They also discussed the means to further strengthen bilateral ties and bolster joint cooperation to meet the aspirations of the two brotherly people. Regional and global issues of mutual interest were also reviewed. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with Jordanian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates Ayman Safadi. The two ministers reviewed solid fraternal relations between Bahrain and Jordan and mutual keenness to bolster bilateral cooperation at all levels. They also discussed issues of common interests. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with Morocco's Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan expatriates Nasser Aburita on the sidelines of the ministerial preparatory meeting for the 32nd Arab Summit. They reviewed bilateral ties and ways to enhance joint cooperation in regional and global issues of mutual interest. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, led Bahrain's delegation to the 119th meeting of the GCC Financial and Economic Cooperation Committee, which convened in Masqat Oman. The minister underlined keenness of Bahrain on boosting cooperation between GCC member states in line with the directives of His Majesty the King. And the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Sheikh Salman pointed out the significance of going ahead with the implementation of joint Gulf projects to boost capabilities in facing challenges to the global economy. He thanked Oman for hosting the 119th meeting of the GCC Financial and Economic Cooperation Committee. During the meeting, issues pertaining to the GCC economic integration were discussed alongside the latest developments regarding the program of achieving economic unity between member states. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Mbarak bin Dana, inaugurated the second edition of Mitsubishi Heavy Industry MHI Carbon Dioxide Recovery Plant User Conference. The Minister expressed pride in hosting such a conference in Bahrain, which enhances knowledge and expertise to protect the environment from industrial pollutants. He also stressed Bahrain's keenness to attract these high-level events that aim to advance knowledge and expertise and reflect positively on the development process of the kingdom in the environment sector and its protection from various industrial pollutants produced by factory operations. Mindena highlighted that Bahrain seeks to promote ambitious environmental policies and projects to reduce carbon emissions and achieve zero neutrality. He expressed his thanks to MHI Company and JPEG for hosting an environmental event to highlight the latest technologies and studies in the sector. Bahrain students have excelled in the progress in international reading literacy study as their academic average increased to 458 points, marking an increase of 12 points compared to the previous results in 2016. Bahrain ranked as the third Arab country and 45th globally in a study which 5,251 male and female fourth grade students from 119 public schools and 67 private schools in the kingdom participated. Commenting, the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Jumha, expressed pride 
and the distinguished results achieved by the students of Bahrain despite the challenges faced by the world due to COVID-19 pandemic and the fact that it is the kingdom's second participation in this international test. He stressed that the development of the educational process in Bahrain is a result of the support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The minister praised the education ministry's efforts to advance educational services at all levels, especially those related to basic skills such as reading and writing in Arabic and English, as well as numeracy skills expressing his appreciation to everyone who contributed to the achievement. The Information and E-Government Authority, IGA, won the Smart Cities 2023 Award Smart Citizens Engagement category for Tawasal application for its features and e-services that contribute to reinforcing and enhancing community partnership to support smart cities. The IGA Chief Executive Mohammed al qad expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to the organizing committee for the good organization and awarding IGA, wishing the summit all the success. He emphasized that the award reflects the government's efforts towards adopting technologies and providing advanced channels that reinforce communication between with citizens and residents with public entities and support government efforts and policies towards sustainable development. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues to expand its telecommunications infrastructure with various projects and plans. The Bahrain Telecommunications Regulatory Authority General Director Philip Marnik gave us this statement elaborating on the advancement of the field. Good evening. We very much welcome this investment into new infrastructure in Bahrain. As you know, connectivity is the bedrock of the modern society. We all need to communicate, whether it's to entertain ourselves, inform ourselves, or actually just enjoy ourselves online. We all need to do it. Bahrain is one of the centers of innovation, bringing new data centers here, encouraging new people to come and do their applications here is important for our economy in the future. Connectivity is important to make sure that happens. This new subsea cable will help Bahrain maintained itself as one of the best connected places in the world. The TRA were continuing to work with consumers and businesses to help further the telecommunications market. We'll be holding another open forum in June to actually engage again with all our stakeholders, including consumers, to actually understand what our work plan is to deliver for Bahrain. Thank you very much indeed. The sixth edition of Smart Cities Summit 2023 hosted by Bahrain focused on the main enabling factors for the development of smart cities, which are infrastructure and technology. The summit sheds light on smart city solutions, future technologies, smart buildings and digital twining, smart and sustainable agricultural technologies, presentation of government agencies, initiatives in smart cities and applications of artificial intelligence in smart cities. The event also presented Bahrain's experience in using direct cooling systems to provide cooling for buildings, reducing the use of traditional air conditioning systems reducing the demand for electricity and the impact on the environment.